be a good day to film. Kitty cat, you come here. There is a pet camera. And she may or may not choose to avail herself of such <sighs> amenities. I may need to do some lighting adjustment. If it looks just microscopically different, it's because once again, I have moved everything because that's who I am. What do I want? I want it to be like 5% cooler and like 6% brighter, but I do have a cat in my lap. So let me see. I keep that one there. So let's go to like there, 56. Do I want any, it's, it's already kind of ow. Ow. Uh, we can do it the other way. <laughs> you know, that's not so bad. Um, Kitty, no, almost, almost. You can almost lay down. I just need to turn this up just a tiny bit. Uh, we had Jamie with a six-month reset. Thank you very much during the countdown. Pineapple with a brand new sub. Thanks very much. Welcome to this girl squad, Pineapple. And Casaboo with their 18-month reset. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, let's see. Do this, this. Maybe keep it, like, around there. And then, oh, doo -doo, doo -doo. and then I can turn it down a little bit. If I look sweaty, it's because it's true. Um, I've, well, like I said, I moved everything because <laughs> that's what I do. And some of them are heavy. Okay, hello, hi. Oh, you can see my cables. Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, that's fine. <sighs> I want to chat with you guys and sit in my chair and drink that cup of tea and pet my cat and level a disciplined priest. How you guys doing? I did not forget the lighting, but because I've changed stuff, I needed to adjust it a little bit. How was Raid? Raid was good. Um, we had one thing notwithstanding. We had um, giga lag, omega, like weird lag too. It wasn't registering, I had a breath. It wasn't registering as latency normally, but everybody in the Raid was having like massive frame rate drops. For most of the night, like especially around bloodlust and cooldowns and whatnot, something wasn't working right on Blizzard's end. Um, and it was stressing me out, both because it's difficult to play with that kind of lag, and then secondly because I could not differentiate between frame drops within the game and frame drops within my brain. I couldn't tell if I was insane, and I knew everybody else was experiencing it, but I'm like, what if they're only experiencing it a little bit? but I'm having a stroke because I was also just kind of, kind of a spacey mood. So um, it was, it was, it cleared up by the time we got to Denathrace, which is nice. We re-cleared nine of 10 heroic again, and in pretty good time, it took us about two hours, maybe two hours, 10 to re-clear, and that wasn't too bad. Um, but then we got some more progression. We did not kill, we did not kill Mr. Denny, but probably tonight, knock on, knock on particle board, you know, Fingers crossed. Oh, a lot of shadow in the background now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work work on it. I have a lamp on there. I didn't really intend for that. I was late getting started. Um, about 90 minutes ago, I was like, I have enough time to redo some stuff. Um, I didn't, but I did it anyways. Oh, Rock to Ninja, thank you for the seven month reset. Thanks for the seven months. Thanks for being here. I am, what should I do first? I want to talk, but I, if I give, if I say everything at once, then it won't sound legible. I need to pick one thing to say at a time and then also uh, play the game. So this character, this is who we're leveling. We are on uh, level 29. I'm just about to get flying. I wanted to find a more revealing dress for her. I feel like she would wear extremely revealing black dresses. But I don't have any. I have revealing dresses of other colors, but I don't have any that are black. Um, I don't know if there are any that are, like, black, but I'll have to look into that later. For now, this is what she's... No, that's not what she's wearing. You know what it was? I put her in... Um, it's doing that thing where it's not updating the preview. I put her in... It's not black, it's blue, but that Warlord's robe that has, like, the... You'll see in a second. Is the background light dimmable? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I can turn it off if it's upsetting you, but I'll warn you, I would have to get up and my cat's on my lap, so that's on you. Uh, a champion or playing during the League of Legends variety stream tomorrow. Mm. So yeah, that's the, that's the look there, because I feel like that was more the vibe. Um, needs a better staff? Well, I, I changed it to this one, because I like it, and I wanted something that was very architecturally simple so that I could show off the Wraith Chill effect, the Wraith Chill Enchant Illusion, without 
um, without having it being overwhelming or feeling like it's taking away from the original staff. Because sometimes with the, the Void's Edge and the Wraith Chill, I'll put them on and I'll be like, well, this is cool, but it's a shame that it's kind of obliterated everything that was going on with the original staff. And this staff has very little going on. So I thought it was a nice way to add Wraith Chill to an outfit without having it be like overwhelming. Weren't you dungeon leveling this one? I don't see any reason why I have to stick to just one thing. I did some dungeons, that's true. Um, I did a, I did some dungeons, I've done some questing, um, I went and got my dollar on Hearthstone, you can't see it's in the wrong bag, I got my dollar on Hearthstone set up, so there's no real need for me to go anywhere else if I don't want to. Um, I haven't, I don't really have my heart set on leveling through any one particular, um, format. I do, I think I would kind of like to do some dungeons. I was very much worrying last time I was playing this character about her action bars. I wanted to figure out a way to live my life that felt like it made sense in terms of having some nice compartmentalization between the help and the harm buttons because as a disc priest you are frequently using both and I wanted for the sake of PvE the help buttons to be mouse over I did not want the harm buttons to be mouse over and I was further confused by the knowledge that eventually I'm not going to do dungeons anymore and I'll just do arena where I don't use mouse over in the first place so that was all kind of combining to give me a bit of an aneurysm and what I've decided to do and feel pretty good about and I'm not looking for any additional upgrades. I, for now, have just made mouse over macros like I usually do for my help spells, slapped them on my bar alongside the harm spells and that's going to get me through dungeons. I do have two copies of penance, one is the help and one is the harm or more accurately one is mouse over and one is target. Um, and then when eventually this character is ready to get set up for arena and only arena, I can swap out those, I can just take those macros off my bar and put a normal button on there, and then that will be the end of that. It does mean I have to accept my friendly buttons getting all cozy and intermingling with my unfriendly buttons, but I think that's just gonna have to be my life. I don't think it's gonna ruin me too badly, and there's not enough of each for me to feel really good about putting them on completely different bars or like areas of key binding because I only have so many buttons that are like super comfy and there's things like shield which is friendly and smite which is unfriendly that I'm going to be mashing so often that they just kind of make sense to go on um, similar buttons. <sighs> uh, I use a razor orb weaver which is very similar to the Tartarus, yeah. Um, you cannot do, you cannot queue for classic dungeon while time walking wad, but you can change your time walking, or your, what do they call it? Um, it's not exactly time walking, but it's basically time walking. You can change your, your thing at Chromie to whatever you want. So if I didn't want to do Draenor dungeons, if I wanted to heal dungeons that were not Draenor dungeons, um, this queue is going to keep me for Draenor dungeons. If I wanted to do something else, I could go back to Chromie and Stormwind switch it up. I feel like I just want to do a Draenor dungeon because I betcha one more gets me to 30 and then while I'm going back to Stormwind to change my chromie time, that's what they call it, uh, while I'm going back to Stormwind to change my chromie time, then I can also pick up mount training. That's the word in my brain. <sighs> yeah. Uh, hi, Hazel Sub, Sleepy Bear, how are you doing? Also, we had, uh, I missed a couple. We had Ethelind Enevin with a brand new sub. Thank you very much. Welcome. And Flomain with a two month reset. Month goes by so quick. Mm hmm. I've been, I've been feeling that. I have been living that life. I have the same issue. I wish that the button could split help and harm on the same button, showing half of each spell image. I am sure there are add-ons that do something either similar to that or to the same purpose. I know people have recommended me on many occasions d different add-ons to help set up all of that. I just, I don't want to use add-ons for that purpose. I can't explain why, or at least I can't give good reasons why, but I just, if I can do it without add-ons, I guess I'm using Bartender. Um, but if I can largely do it without add-ons, then that's fine. What are your thoughts about the new Golden Oxman? I like it. I think it's cute. It's growing on me. I've been running it around. I think I like it better than the other new mount. Um, I have both of the new, like, shop mounts. Um, one, the 30th anniversary thing, and then the, the ox. And I think I like Lucky Yun better. I think he's, I, they're both cute, but the saddlebags on the bear and the way they just tornado around while it's running... Um, I understand that the, you know, the snowballs are staying in, they're not falling out. It's not like a, like a slipping hazard or anything, but still. 
<sighs> Did you get the PvP War Spider? Great for me, is it have a million gold? I, uh, I do not have the PvP Spider yet. I do have the Vendor one, which I thought was two mil. I think, I think, it, I th not that it matters. And then, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. I'm like 7% or so of the way in. So, on the Dis Priest, I was hoping that, um, I would read a guide and that, and that I was hoping that the guide would tell me, you're never gonna use Shadow Word Pain, so you may as well unbind it, because I guess I was just hoping for that button back. That's not what the guide told me. The guide told me I'm gonna use Shadow Word Pain quite substantially, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, the fun part of doing Dungeons as Discipline, I find, is seeing where you rank relative to other DPS on the meters while also, you know, ideally not letting your tank die. It's a, it's a fun game that I like to play where I try to be not last, you know, and if I can be second to not last, that's better. I don't think I have a super clean grasp on what the perfect um, what the perfect damage rotation is, but I figure as long as I'm using most things, it's probably going to be close enough. Um, and I do now have Power Word Radiance, which is nice. That will, um, Power Word Radiance. Here, I am, I just need to scooch under a little bit. It's hard because I've got a cat on my lap. Uh, I, I, I enjoy that it applies atonement to the entire group so that I can do my healing to everybody. You know, sharing. Never seen this dungeon. Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. This one used to cause people some troubles. There are some mechanics in this dungeon that you would do well to know. Uh, although, having said that, it has been so long now since I have really done Shadow Moon Burial Grounds, I don't know that I will super remember them. I did play this expansion. How much of it continues to live in my brain is something we're all going to find out today. Uh, Nettles, thank you for the six-month recent. Very, very appreciated. Also, Aaron Thon had a brand new sub. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. I started my first healer, and I appreciated your macro video. Most every healing is awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I can't do it any other way now. Powered radiance on that lamp behind you. I will, I'll try to shut that off last time. It's just a little, um, it's a lamp that I forgot that we had that I had stashed behind our television. And I was, I wanted to add a lamp to this room because when I'm in here at night, it's, it's reasonably bright in here during the daytime. Um, there's, there's enough natural light that comes through this room that it's not too gloomy. But if I'm in here and it's not daytime anymore, um, the net, the builder grade, light fixtures that they've added to this place. They don't do it for me. It's it's not, it's like very warm. It's a, it's orange, it's aggressively warm. And it's also not very powerful. So you get like a lot of shadows, you get a lot of not being able to see what's going on. And it's not like I've, you know, there's no, there, it's not that important, I suppose. But I'm just, I'm, as I get older, I'm becoming my mother and grandmother. And my grandmother would tell me to turn on some lights. So I wanted to, I wanted to just add another lamp to the room that I can have on if I'm just in here raiding or whatever. So we want to not walk on those because they hurt um, raiding or uh, working or something in the evenings. Just so it feels a little less dark and cave-like in here. Um, I looked at lamps online for a bit, just kind of wondering what I, if I was going to pick anything, what I would want. Because I'd want something pretty big and not super cookie cutter. If there's anything I'm discovering I don't like about decor, Decor? Decor? Deeker. Definitely not Deeker. If there's anything I don't like about decor, it's stuff that is like very clearly copy-pasted from about 100,000 other homes. Um, if it's... I, you want something that's at least... A, well, I want something that's at least a little different. Uh, so I came up with nothing, and then I realized I already had a lamp. So I just aimed that at the wall, and then that will do for now because I don't want to buy anything. Oh, man. Uh, favorite female WoW content creator? Favorite female WoW content creator? Oh, picking favorites is hard. There's lots of great female WoW content creators. There's Quissy, there's um, Annie. <sighs> uh, Panzer doesn't do WoW anymore, but she's still making gaming content over on Facebook. You have uh, Eve from t and &E. You have uh, Nagura. You have lots and lots of, lots and lots of lovely ladies. To be fair though, um, it would be disingenuous for me to pretend that I watch everything because I don't watch anybody's WoW content, I can barely stand my own. For some reason, I will, I get, I read WoW news, I will read WoWhead news articles, I will check the MMO Champion front page, but like, streams and YouTube, 
Um, I don't watch any at all. I watch nobody. I don't watch anybody's stream. I don't watch anybody's YouTube. I don't watch my own YouTube. I give it like, I finish an edit and then I look at the file and I don't even watch the whole thing through. I'll just like click through and skim through just to make sure nothing's gone horrendously wrong. And then I'll upload it and I figure, well, if I've really botched it, somebody will tell me. I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. <sighs> uh, let's see. Fans are on the nerd TV show. Yeah, I, I, King of the Nerds, I remember that. It was a reality TV show. Um, I watched it with my friends at the time when it was coming out. And then I later, um, when I was preparing to do Fishing with Crendor, I watched some of the earlier episodes that he'd done with other creators, and he had done one with Danielle. And uh, she talked about her experience in that show and about how they would... Um, like manipulate situations and like knit your speech together, like take individual words of you taking completely unrelated sentences and then write dialogue for you and create it out of your own sound files. So you said all of the words, but you did not say the thing, like the sentence that they put together and how they can twist your meaning and misrepresent you that way. Uh, it sounded uh, horrifying, not surprising for reality TV. I think it's fairly well understood that they do that, but um, upsetting for it to happen to you, I imagine. I don't remember, um, I know this mechanic is important, I don't remember what it is. Um, it, <laughs> something to do with the swords and the, oh, the runes. I'm gonna have to look at the dungeon journal. I remember it's important, I don't remember what it was. Um, we're not doing that right though, that wasn't a healing fail, that was a mechanic fail of some description. <sighs> um. We don't have, I mean, I don't know if Warlocks can battle res. I think, oh, no, we've lost, we've lost the tank. That is how it goes, isn't it? Um, okay, let's take a look. Survive Dark Eclipse by touching the uncorrupted blue runes to gain lunar purity. That's right. like I'm not the only one who's never seen this dungeon. Yeah, no, it happens for sure. Uh, I started using mouse over for healing. I just have to thank you for changing my life for the better. Why haven't I been doing this from the beginning? You've got your whole, you've got your whole life ahead of you. It's a magical day. Big fan of WoW Grandma. Of course, yeah, WoW Grandma, Haughty Chicken, absolutely. Uh, what's your favorite spec to play? Holy Priest. I am a Holy Priest main. I will stick to that possibly until my dying day. When I first started Shadowlands and I said I was going to try healing, I wasn't sure at the time, also I don't remember this is the way that we cleared, I hope so. I wasn't sure at the time if um, if I was going to stick with it or if it was just going to be a phase because I've had the I'm going to be a healer phase many times over the last seven years or so and I knew I was going to give it like an actual proper try this time but I didn't know if it was going to prove to be another phase or not and I have been having so much fun that I can't see myself going back I don't think, like, unless my, like, if my guild just really had absolutely no use for me healing, then I guess I could learn to play a DPS, but this is what I want to do, I think. I think I found, I found my thing. Um, I don't really miss Shadow Priest that much, to be honest with you. Doing, I miss being a ranged DPS in raid because it's very fun to continually try to optimize your gameplay and outdo yourself and try to hit new personal bests and records. Um, that, that's fun, but you can also kind of do that with, um, you can also kind of do that with healing. You can, um, if, if, especially if you're logging your fights, you can try to, um, uh, yeah, we can fight, it's fine. Uh, you can try to parse, you can try to outdo your previous parses, you can attempt to improve your performance according to WoW Analyzer, assuming that they support your spec. Um, you've got lots of, I, I, I have lots of room to improve. I think I'm very far from mastering Holy Priest, but it's fun to climb that ladder. Um, it's just when you're doing DPS in a raid, it's a little more cut and dry because there's always, until the boss dies, there's generally speaking more damage for you to do, unless you're in a very unique situation where you have to hold DPS. For the most part, you know, if you have damage to do, you can do it. And then the more you do, the better. And that's good, right? Like it's very straightforward. Whereas with healing, 
it's all, it's kind of like that, but it doesn't work quite that way because you don't want to overheal and depending on how your other healers are doing and how the raid is doing it, doing or avoiding mechanics and how, um, and how much damage everybody's taking, maybe there's not enough damage to heal and maybe you can do everything perfectly and get a terrible parse because everybody actually did pretty good. Um, it's not quite as cut and dry. <sighs> No offense to people like Shadow, but I find the spell list and rotation atrocious for my playstyle. I haven't really mastered it. Um, I haven't really mastered it. Uh, in Shadowlands. I had a pretty decent grasp on it in BFA and Legion of Warlords before that, but it changes pretty substantially, it seems like, every expansion. And the Shadowlands version, I just don't. Um... Uh, they, they've got a lot of buttons now. So Whispers of the Dark Star. That's the thing that... So for Dark Communion, there's an ad. Yeah, so we want to we wanna kill the ad. I can help. There we go, good. I wonder if that's what went wrong? No. So Uncorrupted Blue Runes once she gets to Dark Eclipse. Uncorrupted Blue Runes, so one of these things. Yeah, so we stand on these. And then we are good, except for the one person that missed the memo, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> there's enough of us to finish this. Oh yeah, well, Dark Star, hmm, it's a, hmm, that's fine. Everything's fine, I'm fine, that tea's delicious. I should probably move? Yeah, because that's going to be alien. This healing's weird. I don't like it as much for dungeons as holy healing, by far. I understand that it's better for a lot of applications, but it's not as fun. For me. Maybe it's just not my thing. It's very likely just not my thing. But what I want it for is PvP. Uh, if I could... <laughs> if I thought I had a shot at, like, glad on holy priest in PvP, if I really believed in myself and put the time in, I would do it. And I don't think I do. Um, I just don't think that's my life. Um, but with Dis, there's a chance. Dis is like a viable healer spec. So, I must learn. This seems tuned a little oddly. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh dear. Um, just because... I wonder if... Have we missed... We got the first ad. We might have missed another one. I know we're down in DPS, but it, this feels like an unusually long amount of time to be fighting a dungeon boss. I'm gonna save my, um... Uh-oh. Save my, um... Schism. For the next ad, because she's gonna heal if it gets to her. Like, I know she's almost dead, but given how long it took her to get- took us to get her this far. Yeah, we can probably finish it now. Dark Communion. Ugh. Kill her! Hey! Wow, I feel like I just progressed on a- on a raid boss. Uh, this does still DPS to heal, yes. Sidu's doing it? Yeah, but he's Sidu. <laughs> I'm not Sidu. I am very far from Sea Dew. I lack the golden retrievers. I lack the experience. A couple other things. Uh, Shailene, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Also, we had 13 Dragoon 31 with a two month resub. Limp Onion with a three month resub. Uh, <laughs> Limp Onion, I really enjoy the name. Kaylee Kay 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 Brew, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Uh, gnome hunters are so cute. The recoil from the rifle and the rapid fire. They're just so, they're just so little. They're just so... <laughs> uh, Mechanome hunter is a fantastic pick. My Mechanome's a hunter as well. Turn on whether to make the switch to disc from Holy seems more fun. If you're not enjoying Holy, then you have nothing to lose from trying it. Um, I... Holy is just much more straightforward to me, it feels. I did some dungeons this morning. I was, um... <sighs> just kind of uh, wandering around trying to sort out what was next for me because I just I put out a video this morning so now I'm kind of setting up what I'm going to be doing next 
And uh, in the meantime, while I was chewing on it, I figured I would just heal the dungeons required for the weekly because I wanted some reputation. I'm like really close to getting exalted with the Court of Harvesters on my main. Um, so I figured if I went and did the two, I figured I should go do those, uh, like the trading favors dailies from underneath the Idyllian Oribos. Because uh, you get like 500 rep, but then um, I get 10% because I'm human, and then it's also Dark Moon Fair. And for once in my life, I actually went and got the Dark Moon Fair rep buff before I turned in the thing, so it was 600 rep for each quest. So I queued for a random uh, Tyrannus Scythe, and then I did a Halls of Atonement as well. I actually I saw some Squirrel Squad in the Halls of Atonement. That was fun. I uh, but it's it's kind of fun. I I kind of like that that I have the excuse of doing those weekly quests for Anima and Reputation to go into like a normal or a heroic because it is kind of fun to queue into a like a like a dungeon that you vastly over gear um, as a healer because as a DPS I'm sure that's fun too you get to just stomp all over everything and have a great time. But as a healer, you get to play the game of like, well, I do need to heal, right? Like these, not everybody's ever healed, so you got to keep the tank up. But then also, how much DPS, how many people can I out DPS by, um, by trying to, like you get to spend much more of your time DPSing because like one of your renews or one of your shields is going to last the tank a long time because of how geared you are. <sighs> this dungeon's going to be kind of an achievement if I, if we get all the way through. I remember, um, oh, oh, wow, that's bold. Okay. Um... So stepping on the bones is going to spawn adds. And then there's, oh, there's like a shadow phase. This one's weird. I'm going to just see if I can get the adds down. See if I can keep my, my tank up. At, at this level, and maybe it picks up at a different level, but at this level it feels like the amount of throughput, the healing throughput that you're doing with atonement is is just kind of a nice thought. It doesn't seem like it's very effective for actually healing somebody up. Um, so now you kill your soul. You must kill your soul. It doesn't seem like I should be um, doing otherwise. So then once I've killed it, I can click it. And now I'm back. But yeah, atonement healing. I'm sure that um, like the residual healing on the whole group, that's kind of nice. This is kind of nice, but just for healing a, a single specific target um, through heavy damage, it's not great. I don't think I would enjoy using a Discipline Priest for Mythic Plus unless it feels pretty substantially different at endgame than it does now. I want to read chat, but this is actually genuinely requiring some attention. <laughs> I did not expect the leveling dungeon to be this spicy. I should get, um, this one, presuming it gets me to 30, which it should, based on how far I am at this point. Um, I'll, I'll switch to regular dungeons after this. <laughs> Because there's a couple more bosses, and I remember Bone Mob being a fun time, and Ner'zhul being a fun time. Uh, Ner'zhul has a, I believe, like a cone of some description, or maybe a... Hello? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's like a ground, there's like an area effect that I remember being quite large and quite painful. And that's a, something that I anticipate is going to wipe at least one person. Oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, this is great with burst healing. It's not as reactive as holy. It's almost as though it's all scripted. Holy has so many buttons that do the same thing. Well, they're all healing buttons, but some of them are cheap, and some of them are expensive, and some of them kind of do their own thing, and some of them are very directed by you. Um, Holy's core loop is about cooldown reduction. Your your best and most efficient spells are your power, your holy words, so your big blue button serenity, and then your sanctify. So a good holy priest is going to use those as many times as they can during the fight, 
and to the greatest effect, like without overhealing and getting ideally five targets into Sanctify that needed healing. So um, to that end, especially with Harmonious Apparatus, you're using, it's about using those things, making sure they're always cooling down if you can, and then making sure that your Prayer of Mending and your Circle of Healing are also always cooling down. And those are spells you can fire off with very little thought to where or when or how. I'm never holding Circle of Healing for anything. If I've noticed that Circle of Healing is off cooldown and I have, there's somebody that took some damage, I'm probably going to press it. Um, unless there's just, it's just single target or something strange like that. One spell that I never cast, and I don't know if I should, but I feel like I shouldn't, because <laughs> I never do, and it, and it doesn't seem to hold me back, is uh, Holy Nova. Holy Nova seems like a gigantic waste of time. Lunaloo, thank you for the four-month reset. Very much appreciated. Nerzul has that fun fence. Oh, that's right, like the Sylvanas fence. There is an Overwatch, or no, Shadowlands reference right before Nerzul. I'll have to watch out for it. I didn't know that. Of course, now I've 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 talked to I've talked to Mean Game about Holy Nova, and now I've got a whole bunch of tiny tiny mobs I could probably AOE, but that's okay. Certain races are immune, or if everyone is doing the splits on mounts now. <laughs> I haven't noticed this. I've heard people talk about it. Maybe I just don't look at my character closely enough. Um, I know it's a known issue that I'm sure they will fix at some point, but I, I must be either very unobservant or it's not happening to me. One of those two things is true. I'm, I'm guessing it's the former. I'm probably just not noticing. Do you know if you will cover the earnings call? Um, I didn't know there was one, and if there is, I don't know what they said. I will usually refresh news on on Fridays. Like, I will go back and review what came out over the past week, and then depending on what did and how much did, I will organize and prioritize based on that. Usually I will skip earnings calls unless there is something in them that seems to directly impact WoW, which usually it doesn't. Usually it's an after the fact. This thing's doing well and this thing isn't. And how well WoW is doing is not particularly important to me, I guess, because as long as I'm having fun, I'm going to keep playing and covering it. So whether or not it's, whether or not everybody agrees with me is kind of besides the point. That's their problem. Um, <laughs> I suppose if, I, if it became so unpopular that everybody quit and nobody watched my videos anymore, then I would need to find something else to do with my life. But um, I would be notified of that by people stopping watching the videos as opposed to, um, like, views would go down as opposed to having to monitor the earnings calls. So usually I don't worry about it too much unless there's something, like, really surprising in there. Also, it kind of bums me out to hear them about them making more and more money every year, but then, like, not rehiring people that they laid off or <laughs> giving raises to their workers. Um, just because everybody does it doesn't make it cool. Uh, Mind Seer is very viable when you have multiple atonements up. Do I have Mind Seer? I must. I'm level 30, almost. I'm level 29. I must have Mind Seer. Why is it not on my bar? Discipline. Mind Seer. Oh, <laughs> it is on my bar. It is on my bar. Wow. All right. That's a good point. I should have done that. It said, wow, it's 29 million active monthly users, which I found surprising. Yeah, I don't have a reference point to frame that against. I don't know how many other games have. I don't know how many WoW used to have. It sounds like a lot of people, but there's a lot of people in the world. You know. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a Razor Tartarus. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> After watching your gamepad video, it's life-changing. I'm always happy when I hear about somebody that's, like, really, really fallen in with it. Okay, so for these... This is actually kind of similar to Coltharok in that you use the goo pile to your benefit. He's going to do a big drag, but then if you are behind, if you're behind the goo, it will, um, if you're behind this stuff, it will stop you from being dragged into it. Because if you get dragged all the way, and I don't have life grip, so that sucks. Oh, uh, no, they made it. It's fine. Uh, if you get dragged all the way, then he eats you. And then I think he spits you out into the water and you maybe can get back up or maybe you just die down there. I don't remember, but it's not good and you don't want to do it. But this should be... I'm surprised that people seem to know that. But that's good. That's good. That means we can probably finish this in our first try. Oh, 
same thing. Oh yeah, I forgot there was a down phase. What a cool fight. Imagine it, Warlords had some neat dungeons. Imagine if they had had Mythic Plus back then. If they'd just come out with it one expansion earlier, they might have been able to salvage Warlords long enough to make another patch for it. It had issues, but uh, it had some really good stuff going on too. I'm glad that WoW survived Warlords, you know? I'm glad that, <laughs> glad that they had enough juice in the tank to try again. Uh, I did get the new mount that came with the six month sub. I like it quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if Ashran took all the budget, but Garrison's, I think, took an insane amount of man hours because there were, even though we didn't get all the iterations that we wanted, we didn't get Garrison's in different locations with like all the different skins, just all of the different versions of all of the different buildings apparently was just so much and like, and all the systems attached to them because there were so many different iterations of it. Even though it was pretty cookie cutter, there was just a lot of upfront there is what I remember hearing. Unless I just made that up. I don't remember if that's a true fact or just something that sounds right, but I feel like I remember somebody talking in, in an interview about how one of the challenges of Warlords was how much, um, how many assets were required just to get garrisons off the ground in the first place and how the more they did, the more they realized they couldn't make it as ambitious as they wanted to initially. And it's possible that some of that lost potential might have <laughs> saved garrisons from the, uh, the fate that they landed in. Um, I do not make the grade in my main, though. No. Quite a lot of people already forgot how bad WAD was. WAD was, um, I mean, saying an expansion is bad is generally subjective, right? Because people will say an expansion, like, good and bad depends on what you value and how much of that was in the expansion. If there's ever an expansion that I think a lot of people can agree could have been better, Warlords is probably one of them, because no matter what you say, you can't argue with the fact that they just didn't put out, like, it's missing a patch. 6.2 was the last major patch. Um, it, they didn't finish it. They, it was going so badly, um, at least public relations wise, and for good reason, that they, uh, that they pulled the plug on it earlier just to move on to Legion. It had some issues, but it had some good parts too. I didn't hate it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a, it's, it's not a, it's not a popular take, but I had a better time in Warlords than I did in Wrath. It's not that Warlords is a better expansion, but I had more fun in WAD just because of who I was and where I was in life. And I had so much fun PVPing in Warlords because of how easy it was to set up characters. I had handfuls of them. I had like four or five different druids, which meant I could play with anybody. Um, I could, I could pug on them. I could play while drinking. I could play with my, I could play with friends. I could try to push rating and not have to worry about overlapping the rating on any character. And it was so easy to get additional characters set up. The worst part was leveling them. Getting them gear was super easy because you, you barely need, needed anything because of the way the scaling worked. That was my favorite version of the game for, for arena by a long shot. Um, I had a wonderful time playing PVP. So yeah, there's the cone. Bye kitty cat, see you later. Oh, oh, there's the skeletons. Oh, they're not like a ring, it's a fence. Oh, I see. But they, they got one, they got one, that's good. <laughs> I was mistaking it with, there's a, there's a ring version of that mechanic that appears in, they've used that at least twice, right? Like they did it in, on once in, on a Sylvanas fight. I think it was Sylvanas in that Caverns of Time dungeon where you're fighting all kinds of, I don't, that one was weird. And then, um, and then I feel like they did it again as well. Don't remember where though. Kitty, you're trying to, you're, Kitty, you're working for the enemy. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. I meant to, I meant to use penance on the tank. Whew. 
Woohoo! He 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 he! Some days you don't have to work for your broccoli, and some days you gotta work for your broccoli. You'd think that being a priest main, dis would come relatively easily, and I really don't think it does. I feel like dis and holy feel as different as like resto druid and resto shaman. There we go. That was the dream. Level 30. Uh, got the dungeon done. Got a staff with an appearance that I needed. Neat. Like that. And that's the last Warlord's dungeon that I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, that was a wad dungeon. Mm. Having fun? Yeah, I, uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy <laughs> spicy dungeons, especially when it's something like that that's just kind of like a little overtuned. I don't think anybody was horrendously butchering the mechanics, I think it was that dungeon is just weirdly overtuned, which means that it's you actually have to try. And uh, that's fun, you know, it's not it makes it hard to read chat, but it's less of a snooze fest than it could be. Okay, so we're getting out of here. Uh, dis yeah, this feels so different from Holy. Hazel, you got any desk? Not really. But let me tell you what I did. I took my existing desk. <laughs> And I wanted a different finish on it. My desk had a... Here, let me turn off that light while the cat's out. Um, my desk had a dark wood finish, and it ha it's like probably six years old, and I use it not gently, and it was like gouged, and it was scratched, and it was just very dark, and I wanted a lighter wood finish. So I um, have become a little fixated on you know, office, office DIY makeovers and stuff and people setting up their workspaces and design and designing stuff on YouTube. It's a whole rabbit hole you can fall down. And one of the things that I decided I wanted to try because what I want to do is nothing expensive and nothing permanent because I'm eventually going to move. This table is very cheap and in terrible condition. I'm not even bringing it with me. So I don't want to work too hard on something that is not going to be permanent. But also it's kind of okay if I ruin it because again, not permanent. So I wanted to do contact paper to add a new finish to it, change the color, and just give it like a little bit of an easy makeover without having to mess with paint or a new table. Um, I made a couple of mistakes. One of them being that I didn't measure. I just thought, it's only one desk, it's a table. How much contact paper do I need? And I only bought the one roll and that was not enough. So if you saw my Instagram story, you'll notice there's like a weird, rectangle on the table um, that is a different finish than the rest of it. And the reason for that is I ran out of contact paper. I had done about three fifths of the desktop and somebody might stop there and then order more and then finish the job when they got more. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to get all my stuff mounted up. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that mount onto the edge of my desk and I needed them all back in time for stream. So I, um, so, and I wanted to put them back and I did not want to take everything down and do it all over again because unplugging everything was a trial and I bonked my head crawling under my desk and I was grumpy about it. So I didn't want to, I just wanted to, to put everything back and be done. And I realized I had a different, I had the remnants of a different roll of like a rice paper finished contact paper and was like, you know what? We're going to have a geometric section because why not? I get to do whatever I want. So I finished it in a different finish of contact paper and now there is a rice paper finish triangle or, re or rectangle-ish, a little bit of a whoopsie edge on one corner of my desk. And you know what? I don't hate it. Nobody's got one like mine. Um, it's, it's not great. And also I did kind of an awful job laying the contact paper. There were bubbles, there were some wrinkles, but the worst of it's covered by the desk mat. And it was never going to be per perfect anyways because the desk surface wasn't flat because of all the damage to it. So like, it looks all right. And um, while I was moving around everything and putting it all back, I realized, unfortunately, after I'd put it all back, that this was as good an opportunity as any to flip my monitors because I have two, two um, 27 inch 4Ks that I use in landscape or that I wanted to use in landscape and then one cheaper, smaller monitor, because I just like having one vertical monitor, but it doesn't have to be super fancy. And then a while back, I had done some 
desk rearranging and I had just by virtue of convenience flipped them. I think it was when I was flipping around my camera orientation, I didn't want to move my monitors then. So I just spun one and spun the other. And then I was using my 27 inch for vertical, which was a very nice big vertical monitor, but I wanted it, I wanted it in landscape. I wanted to use it in landscape. So I put them back, um, I put them back. <sighs> and now I'm pretty happy with it. I, I switched the sides that the drawers go on because the little cabinet I have underneath is unattached. It's like not related at all. It just fits under my desk. So I put that in the other side. So I'm a little closer to the window and I'm, I'm pretty happy. I think it's good. Um, it's not perfect, but it's bad, like it better than I used to. And I just needed to change things. I was getting, I just wanted something different. <laughs> it didn't need to be better. It just needed to be different. Sinaris, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Also, Silly Lily had a 15 month reset. Thank you. And Zygon with a brand new sub. Thank you very, very much. Dave Theon had a host. Appreciate it. Oh man. Favorite cheese. Gorgonzola maybe or brie or just like a really sharp cheddar mild cheddar has no place in my life um i understand that it's cheaper and i will occasionally have mild cheddar instead of sharp cheddar if i'm being budget conscious about my cheese purchases but given the option sharper the better you don't <laughs> mild stuff is just sad it's just sadness in a brick I am, so now I can fly, which unfortunately means that I'm not going to ride <laughs> midnight around anymore because as much as I live midnight, it does not fly. So I'm looking for like a gothic Venthyr-ish flying mount, keeping in mind that I don't have any um, Venthyr mounts. I have this thing, but that's very Necrolord, that's not very Venthyr. What do I want? I had those filtered to just Shadowlands mounts because I wanted to see. So let me see, filter, I want to f see flying mounts. And I'm just going to click through until something makes me happy. There's this. And they do fly. Gosh, those things are huge. They're also very warlocky. I don't know if I'm feeling that for Dispriest. This thing fits the bill exactly. However, it is a shop mount. And uh, I do think the colors work. That might be it. I don't hate that one. We'll, we'll throw that on the bar. Um, I'm seeing another option. I'm seeing the, the mind borer. I think that's, I don't know if I would call it Venthyr, but it's got the colors going on. <laughs> Um, looking for, looking for reds and, I guess it's not really red and black, it's red and blue. Uh, Parantua, thank you for the three month reset. Voidwing, Ashes. I'm looking for red and black. Ashes is kind of like rainbow. Uh, Hazel, I've only ever done a two for Sanguine, I just got an 11. Sounds like it's time to, uh, to believe. Priests have been known to bore into a minor two, this is true. I don't have Blanche, no, not yet. I'm gonna get it at some point. Uh, oh, that one's got the colors, that's the one. Black Serpent. Um, and I never ride these things. Can't imagine why. Uh, you know why? It's because they're too wooshy. They're too noodly and they're too wooshy. They look really cool in the mount screen. Um, I appreciate the chomps. I appreciate what I choose to believe is an eyeball and not a sphincter in their mouth. And, uh, but they're, they're wooshy and noodly and they don't have any legs and it's weird. <laughs> red, black, red, black. Red, black, like gothic. Best bet's probably the bat. I think I think that's it. I think that's the one. <sighs> uh, yeah, the star bat. <laughs> it's too wiggly. Pecorino with honey. Yeah, yeah, I'll get Blanche at some point. So I should go fix up my <laughs> time walking so I don't have to do any more. I, I like doing dungeons. I don't know if I want to do any more of those dungeons. What do you guys think um, is a good one here? I think shield discipline is for raiding. I think the move is either Mindbender or Solace, but I don't know which. 165 holy damage. It's not that much damage. Wait, it is. What? Hold the phone. Mind Blast deals damage, preventing the next damage they deal. I have never read that, those words before in my life. That's got to be a Discipline Priest thing, right? That's got to be a Dis only thing. Do you need rep for the Bloodhawks? Bloodhawks. Do you have Secret of Knowledge title? I don't know. Um, I'm wearing Faceless One. The Seeker of Knowledge? The... <sighs> if I have it, it doesn't appear at this level. I would say probably not. It doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Added some purple to my red and black transmog. I used the Lucid Nightmare for my Venthyr look. Uh, Wooshy Noodle is a scientific term. Oh, man. Yeah. 
Kitty cat. But yeah, I think that was that was the first phase of the desk makeover. I want to, I think I'm going to get more, I think I'm going to get more of the maple paper. I don't think I'm going to fix the, the square on my desk. I think I'm just going to leave it that way. But I want to, I think, take that back table and refinish that to match. And then maybe some little floating shelves, just really light ones that I can kind of command strip up to put like a speaker on the wall. And then, um, and then I have an extra shelf that I don't know what it would be for. But I just want as many things as I can off the desk. I don't really know why. Mostly just for the look, I suppose. I'm just trying to make it a real comfy place to be. I, um, I do feel more comfy in my chair, though. I think that I, I, my concern about the mat having had a bad groove worn in it was correct, and flipping it seems to have made a big difference. I wish the bats had a ground animation. Yeah. Yeah, they don't seem to have, like, their their back feet don't don't really come, yeah, they could. They could have one, but they just don't. I was going to say, they don't have feet, and then I looked at them, and that was verifiably untrue. They absolutely have feet, and I'm sorry to have slandered their good name in such a way. How is your cable management? Bad right now. Very bad. Um, I would like to one day have it be beautiful, but this place is not the place. I just move stuff too much. I move stuff too much and I have too many things plugged in and I'm too lazy to install a cable tray. I might install a cable tray. <sighs> that sounds like the kind of thing I'm going to do. Once I start doing stuff, I can't stop. Um, I, it's It feels out of my hands. I may install a cable tray, especially now that I think I'm happy with my orientation. I think the camera placement's pretty good. Um, I think the mic's good. It's not as much in my way anymore. Before my mic was kind of blocking my view of one of my monitors and it's not anymore, which is nice. Um, so I could lock things in a little bit more, but also you don't see under the desk unless you're actually like down there looking for it. The angle of the room means that you're never really, you're never really glaring at it. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and it's relatively clean. It's annoying to get back there to grab the plants. I have some plants behind my desk that I like can't reach <laughs> unless I have to, unless I really stretch, but that's fine. My cats don't allow bad cable management. Uh, before Shadowlands, I was close to ending my WoW journey after 14 years, but the night fame made me happy. Warforged Nightmare looks pretty cool. Oh, that's a good point, too. What spec should I pick for a shaman? Um, the world will tell you to play Ellie, and I'm going to tell you to play Enhancement. Uh, because I've just seen what it can do. Do you know what the lights on your shelves in the background are? They are cheap LEDs. They are cheap RGB LEDs. Um, they're, you can get them. They are no name brand. They are different name brands. And they should cost somewhere between about $10 and $14 for a big roll of them. Uh, they come with a little remote, so you can't program them to any color. But you have, like, a decent selection of colors, and it's a bajillion times cheaper than, like, Philips Hue or something like that. Um, and you just ad you just tape them up there, adhe adhere them, uh, plug them in, just a little USB port, and then a little USB power, and then you are good. Um, so if you, just, if you just search for, like, LED strip lights, RGB LED strip lights, you should find something. I want to do be, be basic dungeons, I think, are my favorite dungeons. I think I'm just used to those ones. Mm, random classic dungeons. That's the stuff. Also, I feel like they might be faster. Enhancement is the best. It's pretty cool, but their spell should activate your auto attack. Another priest? Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem. <laughs> Biggest problem with enhancement is it's melee. Yeah. Whew, it's fun. Uh, you were talking earlier about having fun seeing yourself on the DPS meters as a healer. Did you watch the recent MDI? Those healers are bonkers. No, I haven't seen it, but I think I should try again. In the past, when I've tried watching MDI, I've gotten very bored. But I think that was before I started enjoying doing Mythic Plus as much as I do now. And I think maybe I would have a better time just getting, just seeing things like that. Like what people are capable of, what they're able to do. Hmm. Well, more of this. Leveling seems to go pretty quick. I am, I, we just hit 30, and this character is eight hours in. I feel like it usually takes me about, I mean, I know some people can do one to 50 in like five. Um, it usually takes me like, I, I'd say 20 or so to get to 50, like 24 maybe, which is about twice as quick as the old 48 hours of play that it used to take me to get fully leveled. It was my first time watching WoW content like that. It was fascinating. Excited to watch the next one since I've been going so hard in Mythic Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find it's always it's always easier to enjoy the the pro content when you're 
also doing some version of it yourself at home. <sighs> what else was I going to work on? There was something else that I wanted to set up. And I can't remember what it was. I wanted to... I, oh, <laughs> it wasn't an office thing. I want to be handier. Oh, big camera while we're, while we're waiting for the queue. I'm not very handy. Um, I... But, you know, I'm not handy yet, right? Like, I, the way I see it, I need to botch about 20 different projects to learn all the lessons that they hold for me. And I'm going to ruin some stuff, and then I'm going to learn. I have to learn by doing. I don't learn very well without having a memory to connect the concept to. So I, um, once upon a time, installed some curtain rods into this office. Um, because I hate Venetian blinds with a blinding fury. <laughs> I get it. I didn't even mean to do that. Uh, that was a terror. That wasn't even good. Um, <laughs> not that they're ever good, but that was especially bad. I disliked Venetian blinds and I wanted curtains, so I hung curtain rods. And from hanging curtain rods, I've learned the importance of drywall anchors and of a level, which I still don't own. And people tell me to use the phone one and I don't understand how it works. I've tried. I'm very dumb. And uh, also about how <laughs> when you're installing a curtain rod, you need the brackets to be all the way on either side of where you want the curtain to be able to pass because curtains are not magic and they cannot pass through where you've mounted a bracket, you silly, silly lady. Things that I've learned that I know now. So one thing that I kind of want to do, and it's not like dangerous you know like electrical stuff is scary because there's electricity it's not impossible but you want to be very careful when you're learning and you want to do probably a little more studying for that kind of thing because um, if I make a mistake with my drywall anchors then I've just made a hole in my drywall that I'll have to, pa to patch up but if I make a mistake with electricity zouchy is not good it's not safe so Electrical stuff I'm leaving for a handier version of me. I want to learn how to change out light fixtures, like take those overhead builder grade ceiling light fixtures and swap them out for like pendant lights, stuff like that. Um, I've watched some videos. It doesn't look that hard. And, as l and I have a voltage meter. So assuming that I turn off the power at the breaker and verify that I have done so using my voltage meter, it should be relatively safe and seems pretty straightforward, but I'm still not doing that one yet. Also, I'm not shopping for light fixtures yet. But um, the one that I was thinking about, our bathroom faucet is horrendous. It is broken and it has been broken for a long, long time. I feel like we had building maintenance look at it at one point, but that route is just not even worth it anymore, um, especially during COVID, but they're uh, they just, they, they like to ghost you. Sometimes you just put in maintenance requests and they just pretend they never got them. So, um, I was looking around and it occurred to me that people just buy faucets. Do they put them in themselves? Do they get someone to put them in? And I looked around and the answer is both. Some people will have somebody come install it, but then lots of people will install them themselves. And I'm like, well, what's that like? So I watched some YouTube videos and I read some Home Depot articles and I'm like, well, with a modern fixture, that doesn't seem that bad. And I got under my sink and I had a little look at it. I'm like, yeah, you've got like some supply lines, got a little spot for a gasket. Um, I am somewhat familiar with the underside of the sink from having taken it apart. I'll take the P-trap apart to declog it. Um, I've learned how to do that. So this doesn't seem that crazy. And our faucet is horrendous. It not only is one of those really sad, really low ones that you're like putting your hands like on the sink to get water on them, but also um, the lid, the, the thingy is broken, so you have to put pressure on it from some angles, but not others, otherwise it comes off and then you have to figure out how to put it back on again. And also um, it leaks. <laughs> and then you have to keep drying it up. Not good. And I was thinking, I could, I could maybe. What's the worst thing that could happen? The problem is there's some rust and I don't want to break something that's already, like I, I would rather them discover <laughs> their own damage eventually. My security pause is already probably doomed. It's fine. But um, that's the danger is that some something due to how broken the current one is becomes problematic when I attempt to swap it out. But then like 
what if I could do it and then it was magical, you know? Imagine being able to choose your own faucet. What kind of power is that? I want to be handy. Uh, never saw the YouTube play button. Yeah, it's mounted very high. There is a BFA, there's a signed BFA poster, a dev signed BFA poster to the right of it um, that I didn't pick up, but somebody ha who went to BlizzCon, I believe 2017, which was a year I didn't go, they got one signed for me and sent it to my post office box. It's my favorite dungeon. An apartment, you can have an insurance problem if you do that, if you swap out the fixture or if you leave the one that they gave you that was damaged. Um, not that it matters either way. Uh, got a new Venetian blind in my study. I regret it. <laughs> Goes ballistic with the slightest breeze. Oh no. My girlfriend found out through my mom that my dad taught me how to be handy, so I'm the designated to fix stuff around the house person. Mm. Yeah, I think I want to be that person because um, it's just nice. I don't want to have to like, you know, pay somebody. It's not even about paying somebody. It's about talking to somebody <laughs> um, to come into my house and do it for me. You know, COVID notwithstanding, um, contracting experts to perform things around the house for me just sounds like more work than it's worth. I would rather learn how to do something myself than like pick up the phone and call somebody. <laughs> that's, that's how much I don't want to talk to people I don't know. Uh, Taranga had a four month recent. Have a great day, Hazel. Thank you. If you swap and there's a leak, you're personally responsible. Yeah. <sighs> well, maybe I should just leave it leaking then. Uh, can't settle on a healing spec. I have a 60 druid, but I like Holy Paladin, but I also like the idea of being an amazing disc priest. I don't know, I don't know how you find the right one. I just kind of, I just kind of liked one best to begin with, which wasn't disc priest, but um, um, sometimes you, sometimes uh, you can get inspired, I think, by watching people that are like really invested in a spec play it like i will often just watching somebody that's really good at something and i should be clear i'm not talking about myself watching somebody that is very good about good at something do the thing they're good at and enjoy it is very is very inspiring to me and that's inspiring to everybody that's not unique to me but um like i can watch <laughs> anybody that's like real jazzed about what they're doing and be like man i should do that no matter what it is um it's I just, it's just so cool to see people in the zone like that, that uh, it's pretty easy to convince me that I want to do things just by showing me somebody that's good at them. So maybe you just need to uh, figure out which one you're like you're leaning most towards and then find like a, like a role model, find the person, the streamer or whatever, that's like really good. Maybe like the, the, you know, the, the top guild raider and then watch them do it and be like, man, when I grow up, <laughs> I'm gonna be like this person. Uh, you talk to a lot of people on Twitch? That's not true. Um, for all I know, there's about five people here and we're just having a nice chat. I never look at viewer numbers and I thank people to not tell me about them because I have to actively deny those in my brain. Um, it's other, Otherwise, I'll, I would never stream. If I thought about it, I would never stream. <sighs> the sound of the phone ringing at the other end is one of the scariest sounds in the world. Um, yeah, that's true. I don't see them. Like, I have a little chat window on my monitor. It's very cute. It's about this big. It's a very specific size. I spent way too long resizing it before the stream because I wanted it to align with the with a different thing that I have in um, in OBS above it. And then I have people's names and they're, they're in colors and there's little icons and it's just all very cute. And then you can read what they said and talk to them. But I'm not, I'm not conceptualizing actual people watching me because that's terrifying. Uh, Point Mix, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. 12 people, as always. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would, I would love to say it's because I'm very enlightened and I'm very humble and I'm just above numbers. And I don't, I think that's disingenuous. I think that I care about performance and metrics as much as anybody else um, on Twitch or YouTube. Well, maybe not about Twitch. I'm, I'm, I, I could probably stand to care a little bit more about Twitch. But, um... I, I care about numbers as much as anybody else, but I just can't conceptualize them or look at them in real time um, because it freaks me out. Um, and that's advice I think I would give to a lot of streamers, um, especially if you're new, is that don't look at your viewer count while you're streaming. Review it later. Um, you compare different streams and their average viewer counts. Twitch keeps all kinds of statistics. You can later see how many people you had at the beginning, middle, end of your stream, when they joined, when they left. 
Um, you can go look in your VOD to find out what you were doing when they left or joined um, if you want. But look at that stuff later when you're not in the moment. Because if you are a brand new streamer, and I've, I've been there, and you're streaming to like three people, and you're doing your very best, and then somebody leaves, and now you're down to two people, or two people leave, you're, you may never know why, and chances are very good that it wasn't you. But even if it was you, it just gets in your head, and it's you're not going to get actionable information on the on the go at the time. It's just gonna it's just gonna kind of ruin your flow. So um, I I always advise to not look because eh, the number is too high. It freaks you out. The number's not high enough. That freaks you out too. Better just check the number later. <sighs> Uh, anything new for Lunar Fall? Lunar Festival? Lunar Festival? Uh, starts tomorrow. I don't know if there's anything new. I haven't heard. I would imagine that if... I haven't heard. Um, I don't think. So I would guess not, but there may be some surprises that come out tomorrow. You never know. What if I'm not a person? What if you had some birds watching the stream? Would that help? That would be very cute. I've uh, on occasion been sent um, videos of people's cats watching the stream um, or watching my cat like right now we don't have any, anybody on the pet cam because my cat's like right here but uh sometimes there will be a cat or a dog so i'll get i'll get videos that people have taken of their cat watching my cat and that delights me to no end <laughs> oh man uh i hear the best way to build a twitch community is to already have another community that you promote your stream to seems like a lot of work yeah, um, I've, yeah, I've said that before, and I agree. It's not exactly like you want to... I mean, I guess it is. I guess it is. <laughs> it is. Um, the, the problem with Twitch content is that if you are brand, brand new, and nobody knows who you are, and you're not networked to anybody else who's already established, people just don't know you yet. And the value of long-form streamed content is largely personality-based because... It's long form streamed content. You know, you're not editing, you're not able to, you know, just be spitting super useful facts like 10 hours for 10 hours straight. So if people don't know you, like the value of watching a stream from somebody that you have no concept of a relation to altogether is is tough to quantify for somebody looking for a stream to watch. So what people will look for is they will look for streams, they will watch streams of people that they already know from other places, like maybe somebody they're familiar with from Twitter or from YouTube or from TikTok or like whatever. People they already know from other platforms or people they already know from other streamers. So you'll, you'll see streamers with friends that join their stream and then eventually start their own stream. So that's another path that people will take. Um, of course, requires you to have streamer friends that will feature your content. Uh, so I didn't use that one because that felt, it, it, I felt like if it wasn't organic, then it's just icky. Um, but people that are, if you're just, if you happen to be friends with a big streamer, then that's, that's one move. And then, um, and then the other thing is um, people will occasionally browse streams and just by virtue of um, social proof, they'll just check out high viewer streams, right? So they'll, they'll click into a stream and maybe they've never heard of the person, but maybe, you know, you see the thumbnail, you see the category and you say, hey, there are you know, 400 people watching the stream, I wonder why, and they'll click in just to kind of find out what the deal is. So when you're brand new, you don't have the benefit of social proof because nobody's watching your stream yet. And if you don't have the benefit of networking, and you also don't have the benefit of, um, of an existing audience to draw on and promote your stream to, then you are basically just praying that somebody randomly clicks into a low viewer stream and that you happen to be doing something interesting and you know appealing enough for them to stay and then and then for that to happen enough times for you to get to the social proof stage where you have enough viewers for people to come on their own and that is an extremely big ask it's happened but it's a very big long shot um and that's why people will start um youtube channels and you know social media accounts and try to grow all of them simultaneously instagram's another one um to you know, to get your, your foot in somewhere because the, the type of content that you're putting out on Twitch is not usually a good first impression. It's, it's not necessarily a bad first impression, but, um, you know, you don't have a lot of control. Like if you're streaming for five hours, somebody's going to come in and they're going to make up their mind about what kind of a stream it is within about 30 seconds, if that, if that, right? And within 10 hours, you take any random 30 seconds and that can be somebody's first impression of you. Um, your odds aren't as good 
as as they would be if somebody goes to like your YouTube channel, they're like, oh, what's their most viewed video or their most viewed TikTok or their most recent Instagram post or like whatever. Um, those those types of content would be a more curated form of um, form of first impression, and it's still hard to get started on other platforms. It's not easy to get started anywhere, but um, Twitch is a tough one because of the format. <sighs> Plus, there's um. Uh, YouTube benefits from search, which is how I got started. Uh, Hero with a 17 month reset is priest type. I haven't, I haven't felt like the glow yet. I haven't felt whatever it is about this priest that makes this priest so, for lack of a better word, evangelical about it. But I'm waiting for it. I'm hoping for it. Uh. I'd ask what number is high and lowest for you to be content with, but I don't think that number exists. It also, it flexes over time, right? So I, I don't know if I have one for Twitch. Um, I, I would assume that on Twitch, if I started getting drastically fewer viewers on average, then I would enjoy to like a theory as to why. Like if I used to average like 800 viewers and all of a sudden I start averaging 200 viewers, then I would probably do some looking around to figure out, is it happening to other people? Is WoW in general having a downswing? Have I done something wrong? Um, you know, is there is there some is there something I can attribute this to, or am I just no fun anymore? Right? Like, there's I would try to figure out why. Um, so I think the the acceptable numbers are really in relation to the numbers that you're already doing. And I would say the same thing about YouTube. It used to be that if I put out a video and it got a hundred views, I'd be like, well, that's the bar, and then anything else is gravy. And while that's still sort of true, there's a point at which if everything else is getting a thousand views or ten thousand views, then you kind of want other videos to keep up with like your minimum bar, I would say. Um, otherwise, you feel like maybe that wasn't the right video to make, or maybe you did something wrong with titling or thumbnailing it or something. <sighs> now that we're on the topic of content creation, have you thought about making your Twitch content into YouTube videos? Purposely gear some of the Twitch content that we can turn into YouTube content. I do make Twitch content into YouTube videos. I have. Um, I have full streams that I publish, but I also have stream highlights, like the video that I did on, the video that I did on explaining the beginning or the basics of parsing and of logs. That was part of a stream that I just edited down. I don't like the idea of turning on Twitch and live recording a video, knowing that it's going on YouTube later, because that feels. I've seen people do that. It doesn't feel like it's right for me. It feels a little awkward. Um, and then when I'm actually recording videos, I do about 57 takes because I'm insecure. So um, when it happens naturally, like when I had um, a moment on stream that felt like it would be useful for YouTube, then I'll take that and I'll edit it down. But I don't go out of my way to generate them. And I don't want Twitch based content to become like the majority of the stuff that I do on YouTube because I wouldn't want people that only watch me on YouTube to feel like I'm just abandoning the platform um, because it is... Uh, I wouldn't want to do that. Networking and who you know could be a big part of being a content creator. Pretty exhausting. It's certainly a big part of it if, if you choose to take advantage of it. And it's a smart to take advantage of it. Networking and playing with other streamers and getting yourself into different groups and, and rubbing elbows with the right people is certainly a great way to grow. But I just... I just... I can't stomach it. Not like it's not a, a dig against streamers. Many of them, everybody I've met has been lovely and professional and friendly, and I would enjoy getting to know them better and playing and playing with them and spending time with them. But everybody's busy, and um, and there's this weird dynamic where I, if I'm going to befriend somebody, I don't want them to feel like I'm doing it for their influence and. The same vice versa. I don't want to, I don't like the feeling that somebody is just trying to get to know me because they want to access my audience. It's gross, right? Like you don't, you feel, you feel, it feels very shallow when like people are taking advantage of each other, which is why you see people often networking with people of similar sizes because that at least neutralizes some of that aspect. Um, and just generally speaking, it's, it's just a lot of, it's just, ugh. I'm not very good at navigating uh, social intricacies. So I try to just do my own thing and try not to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, do you always stream this late on Thursdays? Yeah, regular time. I think I'm a bit behind in chat. I just don't want to miss too much stuff. Kitty cat. <laughs> Kitty cat. What about the bed? I go looking for little streamers. The biggest issue is they sit and play and stay silent, not engaging. Yeah. 
And that's the tough thing is you never know when somebody's going to pop in and you're going to have your first impression. And it seems, especially when you're a brand new streamer and you have nobody there, it seems silly to keep a running commentary and to talk to yourself because there's nobody there. You feel insane. But then when by the time somebody does show up, you're not going to notice in time. There's some lag there. And the other thing is that if somebody is clicking into a one viewer stream or a no viewer stream to find out what's up, there is a decent chance that they don't want to be acknowledged unless they specifically say something in chat. Um, part of the reason why I don't click into low viewer streams, or at least I wouldn't do it while logged in, is because I don't want to be called out before I've had a chance to opt into that, right? Like, you, uh, it's, it's scary. I don't like follow bots for that reason. I don't like... Uh, I, I want to be able to follow a stream without ha having a thing be made of it. So, um, so you have to just kind of do your thing independently of viewers and then hope that they're around. But yeah, growing a small stream all by itself is uh, tough. But not everybody that's streaming for a really small stream wants to grow. Some people just kind of want to do it because it's fun or they're doing it for like a couple of friends. Um, or they just kind of, you know, they wanted they, they just wanted to, to set it up and... Do it anyways. Not it. Not everybody is trying to be ninja, you know. Network with similar sizes. I'm antisocial, so I rarely talk to anyone. Yeah, feel feel that. And like, I'm not caught up on the stuff that I want to do. It's not like I'm swimming in extra time. Oh boy. Genuinely happy to see you doing some more appearances in other people's content recently. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun. I do like doing that. I do. I do. I've done a fair handful of like podcasts and and shows and stuff. And it's not too. It's not too tough to pop onto other people's stuff. What I probably wouldn't do is I'm not brave enough to to like come up with my own concept. Uh, actually, I guess I looped. I looped Hero into the pet PvP video. Um, I I hit him up and asked him to be a part of that. But I think Hero is the only WoW content creator friend that I feel like I know well enough to like do that. Um, I, I don't like asking for stuff, um, especially from people I don't know very well. So I usually just don't. Stream for a few friends so they can see how ragey I really am. Hmm. I'm thinking that now that I am done with the tour guest tips video, I want to maybe do, I'm torn between, um, I guess I can do a little bit of both and like alternate them. I want to do a couple more of those mount guides because I can get the mounts along the way and I want to do that. And uh, I'm just so far still struggling to catch up with even knowing where the Shadowlands mounts come from, let alone having all of them. So I think it'd be fun to do a couple more of those like short how to get XYZ mount videos from for Shadowlands stuff. And then, um, and then maybe look at some currencies because there's a lot of them. And the things that you can get from them and the ways you can get them are kind of all over the place. So I think it would be good for my own enjoyment as well. I think I would get some benefit just from doing the research of like actually figuring out everything that I could possibly get with like infused rubies, for example, so I can stop stressing about overcapping on them because I already got the pet. <sighs> Love that, like the mount vid. Watch your Torghast video, never thought to try blood, de blood spec on my DK. Yeah, I think I, I had, um, one of my friends was doing Torghast's Blood Decay. I think they were having a pretty good time with it. I kind of miss Torghast. I haven't done any of it. I did so much while I was working through Twisting Corridors, and then I have not touched it um, since. Since I did my Twisting 8. I guess I did it once. I did, I did the normal 8s on my Priest to record footage for that video, and then I was, I was done. Because I have my best Legendary on my Priest. And I have a legendary on my druid, and that'll do. And everything else, everything else is fine. You know, it's it's fine. <sighs> I don't. I guess I there's like another pet or two I need, but meh. Eh. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. At least it freed up some extra time. I do feel like I'm getting through some of my Shadowlands like dailies. Like I'm I'm finishing some things, which frees up time for other stuff. I'm almost. I can't decide if I'm going to keep doing the Maw Weeklies. I'm definitely not doing Maw Dailies, but I have been kind of doing Maw Weeklies just to try to get my Venari rep finished. There's one more Torghast upgrade. There's one more permanent Torghast upgrade, and it's a pretty good one. It's the one that always gives you at least two options from the powers. 
But I'm like pretty done with Torghast. I'm kind of done with Torghast. What do I need that for? Shouldn't I just give up? I foresee a currency spreadsheet in your future. Have you tried it with Shadow Priest? I did it the first the first wing of Torghast that I ever did. I did Shadow and then I switched to Holy and never went back. I don't see why I would play Shadow. I don't. If I'm done on Holy, I don't see what I would gain aside from just a good time, I suppose. But I had a good time doing them on Holy. A uh, difference between Torghast and my Enhanced Shaman and Prop Paladin's Nuts. Alt Legendaries? Well, my, my one alt has a Legendary. This alt will need to get at least one Legendary, so she'll need to do some. And I suppose having that extra trait would make it a little easier for her to do it. But, like, not that much easier. Besides, I'm feeling pretty good about getting Legendaries on this character because, one, Legendary Memories, the actual powers are account wide. So because I've already farmed basically all of them on my existing priest, I don't have to farm them again for this priest, which is nice. So she's going to have the power. She's just going to need the um, the soul ash. And then I can just spec holy. <laughs> I already know. I feel really good about Torghast and holy. I know the build that I like. I know the powers that I like. I'm really familiar with the different things I like to do so I can get the runs done pretty easily. Not quickly, but easily. And uh, I think that can I can probably smash that out pretty quick. I guess I could play Shadow on this priest just to do it differently, but I don't know. I don't I would rather do it easily than than differently, I think. Don't you want your level four shot legendary and your PvP twin for the extra stats? Not really. I mean, not enough to do Druid Torghast. I'll do it on this character because I like Priest Torghast, but Druid Torghast is annoying. They want you to keep switching forms. And I don't want to keep switching forms. I want to be in one form. <laughs> but they're like, oh, you know, you go bear and then you growl and then they take more damage and then you go cat and then you do this and then you go this and then you do more damage after you do this. And it's annoying and I don't like it. And I don't want to do it. Um, that and then Roots powers. Just Roots powers for days. <sighs> the bosses basically do not exist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wouldn't... I, I, I would hate to have to find out now what all the boss mechanics are. <laughs> I've made it this far without learning how to fight Torghast bosses properly. I don't see why I would start now. Your Torghast is powerful, but it isn't fun. I never take the Prowl or Growl buff. I just Entangling Roots and then they die. <laughs> Druid Torghast is mass solo. Yeah, it just seems kind of annoying. I, um, the, the extra bonus that you'll get from the stats of a higher rank legendary is not such a big deal for me to really worry about it, I don't think. Um, well, we'll see. If I get to a point where I feel like that extra, like, 15 or 20 int or whatever is really holding me back, then I'll do it. But I think there are many other things that are holding me back at this point. <laughs> <sighs> nice long dungeon. I don't know if this is my most fun way to level. I think it's probably fastest on stream because when I'm questing on stream every time I get distracted I'll stop playing to read chat whereas with this I have to kind of balance reading chat with the dungeon because I'm in a group and they're gonna keep going. I don't get to choose when the group stops or goes which means that we're not really going any slower than we otherwise would. Um, so I think I probably level faster on stream, but questing is just kind of fun. Wish they hadn't brought back Spirit Shell for Dis. Yeah, I haven't, I, I don't think I have that yet. I've heard a lot of talk about it. It seems pretty central to end game gameplay on Dis, but I do not think I have it. Spirit Shell. Maybe it's a talent? It's a talent. Um, it's a level 50 talent, so I don't have that yet. <sighs> what level are you? I am level 30. On my leveling characters, I keep my level right underneath my name. I guess it's probably hard to see, especially if you're on mobile. Um, but I keep it on my screen, on my unit frame, on the left side of my power bar so that people can check if they want. Yeah, I've been staying up a little later and then sleeping in a little later and that's been that's been nice. I think it helps me. It helps me for raid actually a lot. Uh, my my old bedtime used to be ten o'clock, and that was also the time that my raid would end. So I would end raid and be exhausted 
and then immediately like drag myself through the bedtime routine and go to bed. And like the last hour, like 30 to 60 minutes of raid, I was just falling asleep because I was sleepy. Um, and now that I've shifted, I'm, I'm shifting things back about an hour, one to two hours, I would say. So I'm not going to be staying up until like two, but I'm also not going to bed at 10 anymore. And it's nice for raid because I can get to the end of raid and be like, wow, that was fun. What's next? I can, I have some, I have some extra time. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of priest leveling at night, but I think it'll probably still take me a few more weeks to get this done. Uh, Aiden, thank you for the 10 month reset. Now, this is not classic. No, this is retail. Um, I, it is a classic dungeon, though. I have an unchosen talent. I do have an unchosen talent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I must, I, I asked chat and then I got distracted by the fact that Mind Blast apparently prevents damage done. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm in combat. I was going to try Solace because it just looks like fun for this purpose. Excuse me. Ow. Um, oh, did I just wander into stuff or did somebody else wander into stuff first? The tank is taking a second. The tank is AFK. Um, <laughs> which I think is what happened. <sighs> yeah, I was going to take Solace. Is good? Okay. Let me put that on, put that on a button. Um, because my Midger is nice too, but I'm not really going Oom in leveling dungeons. I basically want whatever's going to do more damage. And I find myself kind of lacking for, I don't know, I feel like I could use an extra damage button to press. Be good. I can't believe tomorrow's Friday again already. February is a little bit of a shorter month than usual, but I feel like this one's going to fly by particularly fast. Which is good, because once we get later in February, we got BlizzCon Line. We're going to learn some stuff. Oh, it's instant cast. I thought it was going to be a hard cast. Oh, that's nice. Um, we're going to learn some stuff about... <laughs> Ow! Uh, 9.1. I don't know if I have any 9.1 wishlist items. I mean, I'm not going to make any predictions because I don't know, but if I was going to wish for stuff, obviously flying, but I think we already know that. Um, I guess I would say I hope that flying is not <laughs> too onerous, you know, not nothing too crazy beyond what I've already done would be nice flying without too much extra work because I just kind of want to be able to do it. Um, flying something substantial to gear, PVE gear, um, to help people that are really struggling to get their last upgrades either like a little more loot or some way of some way of filling in for drops that just won't happen for you and then it's not really new zone time is it so excited for blizzcon hoping for allied race customizations it's already friday where i live always weird to hear about people being a day behind there is in future expansions something about the void um I'm sure somebody smarter and more invested in WoW lore than me could look at that cosmology chart that we have and figure out where we're going and why. Void feels very similar to, like, I understand that the Void is different from Old Gods, but they share a lot of themes, and that feels very similar to what we had through the end of BFA. Um, we already had a lot of tentacles, and I feel like Void's got a lot of that too. So I don't know if we're, I don't know if we're thematically ready for it. Ideas in a raid with Zen. Would you like it to be in? I would be down for a, I mean, any of the zones would be cool. I feel like they're probably going to give us, I don't know, actually. Like, obviously we already have one in Revendreth. So we're imagining one of the other three zones. So either something Maldraxxus-y, bastion -y, or Night Fae-like. I think I would really like something Bastion-y, even though it's kind of similar to like the Trial of Valor aesthetic, um, because we have two Bastion dungeons and only Spires of Ascension even feels very Bastion-like. You know, Necrotic Awake just feels like Meldraxxus threw up on Bastion. So that might be kind of cool. I would like to see something, I would like to see us fight the Archon. Um, 
she's I don't agree with all of her policies and I think that we could do better that would be kind of something um, alternatively something Night Fae I think Muldraxxus is the easy choice I think that you could very easily do a very fleshy <laughs> fleshy kind of fleshy plaguey dungeon raid instance and we already had, like, uh, Nathria is delightful, but it's also quite dark. I would like something a little visually lighter, I think, to, um, to contrast it. A Maw Raid has to happen? Oh, yeah. I would assume that the Maw Raid would be the later one, with the Jailer as, like, the last boss of Shadowlands. Shadow Magic's only a little bit evil. Bastion Raid with Forsworn? We've done a fair amount of dealing with the Forsworn in the Kyrian campaign. Um, I don't know if we, we probably haven't fully sorted it out. I don't think we did. Um, but I thought that they they left and went to the Maw. I thought they went to reconvene there. But yeah, we'll see. Something neat. Level 31. You think there will be a raid in each zone? No, probably not. I, I, it feels like too many. Um, unless they do like a pair of shorter raids simultaneously. Um, but it would be a little odd because usually they do those, those short paired raids early, like first patch. Like they'll do a short raid and then another short raid or they'll do two at the same time. Um, it's not super often I think that they do the pair later. Learn what the lore. Oh yeah, we got to talk to the thingy. I love a good info dump quest. I've actually, I have read this at one point in my life. I was doing this quest for what I feel like was the 17th time. And I was like, maybe I should read this. <laughs> I've done this so many times. I owe it to whoever wrote that down to just like give it a little read. Um, so I need to go back to the beginning. And that means I need to hope that other people stay in long enough for the teleport out and back into work. If everybody else leaves while you're teleporting out, then you can't teleport back in. I feel like in the Bastion, the leveling quest, the Mosshorn thing was cut way too short. While Draxus raid with KT seems like a good guess. Oh, that's true. That's fair. Drust raid? We don't really know who they are. Yeah, Drust in the Drust raid in Ardenwild would be really cool. I'm a little fuzzy on what's going on with that. <laughs> Lots of quests at least. That's almost a whole nother level. That is nearly an additional level. Not too bad. <laughs> I enjoy how it's. it really wants me to wear um, those interlaced gloves because they're an item level upgrade. They're, they're not a stat upgrade, but they're an item level upgrade. Oh, we got rid of them in Ardenwield? Oh. Yeah. Maybe one day we go to their home place wasn't there was <laughs> i'm gonna sound it's kind of useless for me to talk about this kind of stuff because i'm so over my head because i just don't pay enough attention i'm not invested enough to like properly learn everything but i remember like little bits and pieces that spooky the spooky misty place that we thought jaina would never come back from that we went and got her from in bfa that was like a drust ish connected related zone yeah, so I, I I think it's reasonable reasonable to expect that with the reappearance of them that we further explore that at some point. Throws, yeah. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's more. Um, it's in the Shadowlands. Yeah, that would be a cool patch, cool patch area if we went if they they fleshed it out more. <sighs> well, I'm not going to any of those places. Mm, 20 minutes. I'll do some questing. I know I said that I wasn't going to do any more of my... Well, did I say that? I was going to say, if I was to try to find out, am I missing any quest mug that I really want to get? You know, I got 20 levels to level, or 19 levels, and I can fly now. And I only have 82% of things collected. I've got 98.2% of appearances collected from Kalimdor. I'm missing, um, I'm missing an offhand from the Timbermaw Holden Fellwood. I'm missing something from the Molten Front. 
There are two weapons from Stone Talon Mountains. And then, um, Keepers of Time, Keepers of Time rep. Figure out what I don't have yet. And then Romgahan rep. Why do, why do I not have Rom Romgahan rep? I would have done that on my priest. That's weird. Ah, I can go quest in Stone Talon Mountain. Where is that quest line? Oh boy, that's that's why I haven't done it. <laughs> if I want to get that egg smasher. Um, if I want to get that thing, that's a long quest line. Usually it will show you the, the highest point that you can jump into it. As long as the new zones don't make me press my mount keybind to no avail. Yeah, I hope that the mod was the last time they did that particular trick. I don't feel like I enjoyed it at all. I just kind of avoided the maw until I had unlocked a maw mount through Twisting Corridors. <laughs> and then I did a little bit of the maw. Uh, this is all the things that is showing me, like, things that I haven't collected and then allowing me to look up quest lines um, that lead to things that I do not have the appearance of because that egg smasher... <laughs> Very important, you know, if you want to collect all the stuff. If I abandon Kalimdor, I have less Eastern Kingdom stuff. There's um, a staff that I can get from the day Death One came. You know what? That's a fun one. Let's go do that. Um, so if I go... Do I have TomTom -tom enabled in this character? Add-ons. TomTom. Yeah, okay. So I think it's like you do Alt, right-click to plot the waypoint. So... Now I have a marker on my map that shows me where the quest starts. And that, that's just like a fun quest line. Plus, I can fly there. Hot take, I think the maw is fun. There had to be somebody that thought that. I see what they're trying to do. And I'm not against zones with a lot of friction with, that are kind of unpleasant and dangerous to navigate and be in. Because in theory, it makes it that much more satisfying when you are unlocking the mount that you can ride and the teleportation upgrades and stuff like that. But I think the problem for the Ma with me, one, muscle memory of trying to mount and not being able to sucks. Secondly, the rewards of it just didn't feel... The rewards of it just didn't speak to me. I didn't feel motivated enough by the rewards. So whenever I was out there, I was just tormented by A, this sucks, and B, why am I here again? Whereas if I was there for a reason, I think I would have been more motivated to push through the friction, so to speak. Um, and I guess having the rewards be kind of whatever is nice in that it's nice because then you can skip it if you really hate it, but then what happened is I just skipped it. Uh, Elia Nasa, thank you for the 18 month reset. I love being able to have your VODs on in the background while I'm working from home. Glad to be allowed into your space. Not a fan of unfun zones. I don't find fun as logging through unenjoyable content regardless of the reward. Yeah, I think that just because something's difficult doesn't mean it, it's not necessarily fun. And if everything was really easy, I think it would get boring. So I appreciate the, the need for contrast and having some areas that are really easy to navigate and, and navigate and that are not difficult to do and having other areas that are more challenging. I'm not against that. I don't know if I've ever had, like, a really wonderful time in one of the tough zones. Um, I think an example would be Argus. Argus had lots of collectibles, and the rewards did speak to me, so I did a lot of it, but I don't know that it was my favorite. But Najatar and Mechagon were a bit tough. I guess they weren't super hard, but they were a little tough um, when they came out. But they were, they were also fun, um, at least once you could fly. <laughs> Making something less miserable is a satisfying reward. Yeah, exactly. Uh, didn't respond to my donation. Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. Let me take a look. Uh, there we go. Uh, Harry, sorry. I there must be something up with my sound. I didn't hear the I didn't hear the alert. Uh, Ten minutes ago, Harry Viking Sam had a twenty dollar donation. Finally, I can join your live stream. Hashtag EU Life. Absolutely love and adore you. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry I missed that. Oh, which way is my cat? Okay, <laughs> she's. She's turned her head around in such a way that I was confused about, you know, because you want, you want to pet it in the direction of the fur. Cat tip. Um, but she's, her head's on this side, but she's turned it around and it, it confused me. Why, how'd you do that? <laughs> she's very warm. 
<sighs> Kitty Cat, are you gonna hang out in my office during raid night tonight? You gonna be moral support on Denathrius? Are you gonna help me kill Mr. Denny's? I woke up this morning and I rolled over and she was gargoyle perched on top of my husband, just like fully loafed up with like the peering head, <laughs> just staring at me while I was sleeping. Oh, spooky cat. I have that shirt too. It's a nice shirt. I like this one. Nagitar and Mechingon were very grindy. Did not like Nagitar at all. Yeah, it seemed to be kind of divisive. I really enjoyed it because there were so many different types of things to do. For a collector, a lot of zones were just kind of like, well, these things drop from mobs, so farm the mobs. But Najatar had many different systems and treasures and um, different things that interacted and overlapped that you could do to get all of your different collectibles. So the, the range of activities you were doing was, was huge. Um, my biggest problem with 8.2 was that Nagitar and Mechagon came out at the same time, and it was insanely overwhelming. I basically, I got the very early thing I needed to do in Mechagon done, I got like enough rep to get my flying, and then I left Mechagon and did not come back until, um, I left Mechagon and I did not come back until... I had basically finished collecting stuff from Nagitar, because the concept of doing both zones every day <laughs> was way too much. It was so much. Um, I would have been happy to have both of those on different patches. Like, I, you know, I managed, I managed, I paced it out for myself by pretending one zone didn't exist for a while, but it was just a lot. Um, the power that we got from Najatar was the essences, right? So that was kind of grindy early on. Um, and then it got better once we could fly because of how vertical the zone was. But I still really liked it overall. I have a few more things I still need. I don't have Fabius yet. So that did not... Oh, I'm not... I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing it wrong. That's not... It's a vehicle quest. I'm thinking... I'm killing rock elementals, but they must not be the dang blasted rock elementals. And in fact, they were not. They were just regular rock elementals. I need to um, get into the, the vehicle for this one. If you've never done this... If you've never done this quest... I... <laughs> It's, it's, it's a good time. Are you progressing Mythic Sire? Heroic. Heroic. I'm not a Mythic Raider. Uh, I got the Crab Mount from Najatar the other week. Congratulations. Still one of my favorite mounts, for sure. Kitty, I'm a little worried you're going to fall. You're a little unsupported on this side. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're a very angry dwarf. You can just one-shot these things. <laughs> I probably didn't need to kill quite so many early. I wasn't sure if it was going to reset me after I went through the wall. It's been a long time since I've done this. I think the staff that I'm getting doesn't look like anything particularly special, but that doesn't mean that I don't need it. <laughs> I need everything. I like the controlling a dwarf counts as a vehicle quest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just appreciate how much more powerful he is than me. <laughs> I always say that I don't like playing melee, and it's true because they don't do this. I would play a warrior if I could just punch things. And have them immediately die. Also, speaking of immediately dying, uh, maybe that's the true warrior experience. <laughs> All right, we just I just got to get through the wall. There's a few different steps of it. I may not get through all of it today. Play a monk in Torghast. Yeah, monks have some fun buttons. If Windwalker... If Monk had a ranged DPS spec, I feel like I would have leaned into it a little bit more. <laughs> Just go up to Sire, punch him in the gut real good. I bet Thelderin would make some short work of Sire Tanathras. Back when not all vehicles had self-heal buttons. Yeah, that is a good point, actually. They do seem to have added one to basically all of the vehicles. I remember in BFA, I would purposefully skip vehicle quests and only do quests where I was playing my own character. And at the time, my logic was, I want to play my own character. I don't want to use somebody else's clunky buttons for, for something else. 
And now I found out that that was just a lie I was telling myself. That was never what it was about. I was doing the other quests, the regular ones, because they were faster. And now vehicle quests are often faster in Shadowlands because the, um, the standard quests require you to kill so many things and they're so spread out and there are so many weird extra intricacies to them that make them just annoying to do. I need to, wow, I don't remember having that much trouble with this. I'm just trying to punch him in the face. <laughs> uh, I think I have to do it more carefully. Um, either that or something has gone wrong with the scaling for this. But um, yeah, I, I will seek out vehicle quests now because I feel like they go faster than the standard ones. All right, I'm gonna punch that dragon in the face. All right, so I'm just gonna one one at a time as I aggro them and so that they're not just hitting me without cause. Kitty cat. I wanna like roast some red peppers. That sounds good. I am hungry, it is dinner time. That's what's going on there. I think I'm getting some jalapeno peppers in my my uh, my fruit and vegetable groceries that have been sort of randomly selected. And now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with them. Sometimes I'll do like a, a jalapeno cheese bread in the bread machine, and that's pretty good. But it's also quite heavy, and I'm trying to eat a little lighter just to keep my energy up a little bit more. I love carbs very much. But the problem is that when I eat them in quantity, I become extremely sleepy and become incapable of doing anything. It's really inconvenient. Um, it's very unfair because garlic toast is delicious. So uh, maybe um, yeah, I could stuff them. <laughs> it hurts. Am I regening? Do I grow my health back? I do grow my health back. All right, that's the plan. I'm gonna park up right here and I'm gonna grow my health back. <laughs> Was wondering when the food talk would start. Oh. I get that way as well, but I drink a coffee with lunch, it counteracts the tiredness. I. I try. The, the the dream is, um, that's why I have like usually an afternoon cup of tea. I'll have like one cup of black tea somewhere between like 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. to try to help me get over that slump. But it's so food based. It's night and day. I used to think that I just died every afternoon because that's just because of the rhythms or whatever, but it turned out I was just eating too much. Uh, can you explain garlic toast again? So garlic toast. What you want to do, you're going to need bread, um, ideally some like fun bread. So I, uh, you can do French bread, you can do baguette pieces, you can get ciabatta buns, that's quite good. But bread, butter, um, or some people will use olive oil, but I'll use bread, butter, and then garlic. Um, ideally fresh garlic. Um, what, so what I do is I take the bread, butter the surface of it, press the garlic. Um, you could also mince it if you don't have a garlic press, but press the fresh garlic, scrape some of that on there, and then toast it in the oven because you don't want to put garlic in like a toaster and you don't, but you want the garlic to get cooked. You don't want raw garlic. I mean, you can, but it's, it's very biting. You, you want to toast it until like the edges get crispy and the butter's melted and the garlic looks a little less raw, I suppose. Um, sometimes you can add cheese, you can add parsley to it. You can add herbs if you want, but that's the, the basic version of it. Usually what I'll do is I will, Preheat the oven to about 350, and then while it's preheating, I will butter the bread, press the garlic, scrape it on, and then whenever I'm done that, I'll just put it in the oven, even if it's not fully warmed up yet, and then I'll give it like 10 minutes or so, and then take a look at it, and it's usually done about then. Um, I will, the problem is that most of the things that I serve garlic toast alongside are also very carb heavy, um, which is not ideal. But um, I've been known to just have it like a big salad, like a big spinach salad, and like a you know load that up with like some fruits and vegetables and stuff, and then uh, <laughs> and then have garlic toast on the side just because it's delightful and I love it. Uh, 
but yeah, growing up, we would buy loaves of French bread and then have it, you would open it up so that you would have crust on the bottom and then you would, you would butter and garlic the inner face of it. That's the best kind. But I don't often buy loaves of French bread here because there's just two of us and we can't eat it that fast. Why are you tagged? Oh, it's okay, I can still punch him. <laughs> there we go. Oh, goodness, well, I hope the rest of them aren't that much. Um, let's try the next one. Yeah, you can do a fast burn. You can use garlic powder. You can use pre-minced garlic. I wouldn't. But you can. But I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> there's only one person on the planet who can make me hungry at 2 a.m. Uh, yeah. Australia, we call it garlic bread, but it's the same deal. Whoa, whoa, who? Am I not calling it garlic bread? <laughs> Who's calling it not garlic bread? This does, I don't think it's a terribly exotic concept. Um, these quests are different now. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that's nil no, not quite right. My camera. I've done this quest before a long time ago. Oh, hang on. Maybe I am forgetting. There we go. Okay, never mind. It was fine. I just forgot what, how, how, how to live my life. We're good. <laughs> I'm thinking, wait a minute. That's not right. Uh, but you just have to, to search the clouds for Deathwing. You know, you got to check for them. <laughs> it's kind of hard to... You, I'm kind of tripping. <laughs> Another week of no fiery warhorse trap? Ah, no. You're calling it garlic toast, not garlic bread? Oh, I see. Well, that's fine. <laughs> The fact that you had to explain the concept? Well, somebody asked! <laughs> somebody wanted to know! Oh, man. Uh, Deathwing is a human form? Mm hmm Yeah, he didn't show his too often. Horde side, this is awesome. Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> I like the look that he gets in his face when he's falling, even though he's gigantic. Um, he's, he seems very concerned about it. Uh, we found him in the big thing. And then this guy, his version, is going to give me the, the staff that I want, which is just a staff with a green bit on it. Yeah, this is the quest out in the blasted lens. <laughs> Giants fall farther. <laughs> well, now I've made myself thoroughly hungry. Choose an Oh, that's right. That's right. So I have to choose one of them to save. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's happening, obviously. Ride to the end of the canyon. Yeah, uh, not even a question. <laughs> a little sidecar. I'm surprised I still had any weapon transmogs that I didn't have from this quest line. You'd think I would have done it on enough different armor types, and lots of people can use staffs. Maybe I thought it would take longer than it does. It's not that bad of a quest line. <laughs> I remembered that my motorcycle can fly. Who eats on toasted garlic bread? I just want to save somebody from the possibility. I mean, of unknowingly making regular toast and putting garlic on it and thinking that's all there is. It's a valid thing to do if you are desperate. But if that's if that's your only if that's the only way you do it and you never try anything else, that would be a little sad. Oh, I need to beat him in a knife fight. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> And staff added my collection. There we go. Yeah, it's a cataclysm quest. Uh, I did not start it today. No, it was a while ago. Mm, she has, let's see, her played is uh, 9 hours, 21 minutes. So it's uh, probably a week or so ago. Shame the human form of Deathwing was never used in a boss fight. 
Thoughts on Warrior? I've never really been able to get into them. I played a little bit of Prot Warrior back in Warlords of Draenor. Um, I tanked for a little bit on Prot Warrior, but I've never really... I don't know. I like I like the fantasy. I, I understand that warrior is a very classic fantasy class, but I like the I like the magic and all the the colorful extra stuff. Um, I I like priest because of how sparkly it is. Warrior just hit thing with stick. Uh, what tea are you having today? I had a cup of English breakfast tea. I didn't quite finish it, but I had enough. It was pretty strong. I was in a little bit of a hurry to get ready for stream because I'd ma I'd almost made myself late. I um, re refinished makes it sound like I did something fancier than I actually did. I covered the surface of my desk table with contact paper and then had to remount all of the different things onto the table and it took me longer than I thought it was going to so I was almost late. Drinking sleepy time tea, it's almost bedtime here in the East Coast. Yeah, I've tried Yorkshire's before. I prefer... Um... Oh, I... If, um, if given the option, uh, there's another brand that I like better, but it's all, it's all fine. It's all good stuff. Uh, love your videos and I'll be keeping up with you here too. Thanks. We do six streams a week. We do this time slot, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, although Fridays are non-WoW. So tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon stream, I'm not going to be playing WoW. And I might not play Stardew. I could play Stardew, and if I haven't set anything else up, then I might do that anyways. But I would like, if I have time and can figure it out, I would like to set up Animal Crossing. I would like to show you guys where I'm at with my, with my new island. I am about 50 days in. I just got the achievement for 50 active days of my island, so I'm a little shy of two months in. Uh, it's a five-star island. And I want to show people around. I want to give the tour. Uh, how do you fly with your hands free? Auto run. Uh, works with works with flight as well. <laughs> Started streaming three days a week and get so tired. Don't know how you do six days. I mean, they're short. Um, they're short. And uh, I I don't try especially hard. I It's a little selfish of me. But I think that streaming, the, be the best stream that I can do is probably a selfish one. Because if I'm having fun, then it's going to be a better stream. And if I'm miserable because I'm doing something that I think the stream wants, but I'm not having fun with, then it's not going to be a very good stream because I'm going to be grumpy. So um, I usually use my two hours a day stream as a, as a window to just kind of do the stuff that I wanted to do anyways in WoW. So like if I wanted to catch up on callings, I'll do that. If I wanted to do dungeons and level and alt, I'll do that. If I want to just like go clear out my bags and stuff, then I'll do that. I just kind of do whatever I'm in the mood for or whatever I'm working on anyways. And I find that works out. Um, for stream, but it also means that I don't, um, that it's not, it's not wearing me out too hard. It does eat some time. Um, two hours isn't a crazy chunk of the workday gone, but I spend probably an extra 45 minutes before stream setting up and double checking that things are working and then, you know, getting dressed in makeup and hair and whatever. And then probably about 20 minutes or 20 to 30 after the stream decompressing and coming back down to my normal headspace where I'm not talking. So it takes a pretty good chunk of the day. Sometimes I wonder what my if I if I should redo my schedule to have less streams but longer ones so that I'm still streaming the same time but have more days. Like right now I don't have any day where I just do YouTube. I have one day that is my day off and I don't do anything. But every day that I'm working on YouTube stuff, I'm also streaming. And sometimes I wonder if I'd get more videos done if I had a day that was just like YouTube gremlin mode day. Or if I had like a Google day. Like you know how, I don't know if they still do this, but they used to there used to be a program at Google where there was a certain amount of an employee's work hours that they were able to use on projects of their own choosing and design. They were able to like self-direct a certain amount of their time and Google still owned the results of their projects and stuff, but they were able to just kind of work on their own stuff and that's how some Google services came to be. And it's a fun concept to think of applying to your to, to my own day where I could say, well, maybe I could work on you know, weird stuff that I know won't do very well <laughs> that I wouldn't otherwise do in my normal time. But, you know, strange projects or like different disciplines or something like that. But I'm so behind on the stuff that I want to do that that's kind of a kind of a long shot. Huh. James, thank you for the three month reset. Happy Friday. I guess maybe not for you yet. Almost. Not quite. Not quite soon, though. Valve did that as well. That's how Portal came to be. I think that um, I think that it would be <sighs> nice to be able to spend more time 
trying things. I think it's very easy to get into a risk mitigation mode where you're just trying to do the things that you know will do well and that you, and, and just try to stay afloat. And I feel like I've been treading water for quite a few years, just trying to keep myself together, but not necessarily growing or expanding. And while I think that treading water is important and uh, not drowning is kind of priority number one, if I can ever get to a point where I'm comfortable and I'm satisfied with what I'm putting out, it would be nice to spend some extra time and energy to like learn and grow and expand and try different things, even if they're not necessarily going to be the thing that makes you super popping off. Uh, I have not played Portal. I don't think I can. Um, I think that I've watched people play Portal for about six seconds before I get violently nauseous. Um, I rep Alliance. Specific content you're thinking of doing in your Disc Priest? I want to do threes. I want to try healing 3v3 arena on Disc Priest. That's the plan. Um, we'll see how it goes, but that's the plan. I am done for today. I'm going to wrap it up. I have a uh, Heroic to Nathra's progression today. I will let you guys know how that goes tomorrow. I will be on stream tomorrow doing not WoW, but something. And then we'll be back with a WoW stream on Saturday morning. So follow the stream if you haven't already and you're interested in coming back to see those things. Thank you very, very much for joining me. I had a great time today. Appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Oh, my stream deck died. End screen.